In today's video, I'm going to show you a little money-saving tip that I've used for a while. If you're into camping and you have lanterns like this, as well as little gas cooktops or anything else that uses a gas cylinder like you see here, this is a Coleman Powermax high-performance fuel cylinder, and it's comprised of roughly 60% propane and 40% butane. Now I could only use this type of a cylinder on the things that I have and if you notice it resembles a spray can like spray paint. You would have the tip of the spray nozzle pushed into the hole and then you would push the button down to allow the pressure out of the can to spray the paint. Now these are around five or six dollars a can when you can go out and buy a can like this cooking gas in a can for around a dollar ninety nine. Now the difference between the two, the butane fuel that you see in the can right here is designed to be operated down to a temperature of around 30 degrees Fahrenheit. The fuel in this can, because it has propane mixed in with it, will operate much lower, probably down to minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do, because I live in a hot climate, I don't need the fuel operating at such low temperatures. So what I do is I fill this cylinder up with this inexpensive butane cooking gas. And it's very easy to do. It works just as well, and you're going to save money. Now what's important is this can right here. The net weight is 10.6 ounces. And the gross weight, if I weigh the entire can with the refrigerant in it, is roughly 13.8 ounces. The can that you buy right here has a net weight of 8 and a gross weight of 11 and a half ounces. Now ordinarily, like when I do refrigeration work, I would actually be weighing the can as the refrigerant is going into it. The reason why you do that is because if you fill this to the top with butane at room temperature and then you took this outside in a hot day and put it in your trunk of your car, you have a very dangerous situation on your hands. When that liquid expands, there's no room for that liquid to expand and what's going to happen you're going to create extremely high pressures and the can will explode so that's why you want to make sure you leave a little bit space empty so when it does heat up and the liquid expands there's room for it to expand safely now because this is less than what was in this can originally it's very easy to do we're just going to take the contents of this can and transfer it into this can which has the special fitting that I need to operate my lantern, my cooktop and small radiant heater. This fuel right here will work fine as long as you're above 30 degrees. The higher you go above 30 the higher the pressure is inside this can. If you were to open this can and it was 29 or 30 degrees outside there would not be any pressure inside this can. You could just cut it right open and you could look inside and you would see the butane sloshing around. Once the temperature rises above 30 degrees Fahrenheit or higher, you would start to see boiling. You'd start to see bubbles coming up just like when you're boiling water. And that's because the temperature is getting hot enough to allow it to boil. So if it's too cold outside, this can will not produce gas. So just make sure this is going to be used above 30 degrees. Ideally, 45 to 50 should be the low point, so at least you have a decent amount of pressure coming out of the can. Now before you attempt to fill one of these cans after they're empty, definitely inspect them. Make sure they're not corroded to the point where you worry about a hole blowing out. Make sure the end isn't all corroded and beat up. And you also have to realize that you can only fill these a few times because there's an O-ring in here. That eventually wears out and it becomes hard to seat. And what you have to do if it doesn't seat is just gently push down on it to get it to reposition, then it seals. Now to get started, you're going to need some water. Move this back further. You're going to take the water like you see there in the bowl, and you're going to add a whole bunch of ice. The purpose of the ice is to lower the temperature of the can, which you will be filling. And when you lower the temperature of the can, you're lowering the pressure of the can. As long as this can is a lower pressure than this can, the fuel will flow into this can, which is in the ice water. 
Now, if you take notice, what I did is I made a tip for this right here. You pull that off. That's a standard push button tip on the end. I took a little piece of hosing for my weed whacker gas line. I think the ID is around eighth of an inch, maybe five thirty seconds. And inside that, I slid a plastic tube. You could probably get away with a WD-40 spray tube, the red ones, shove it inside. And the purpose of that tube is to press the inside of that hole down to allow the seal to open. Once it does that, the outer part you see here, which is the vinyl line, that makes a very positive seal with the top of the can here so the gas can flow without leaking out. So it's got to look just like this. Vinyl with a piece sticking out maybe 3 16 of an inch or less. You slide that all the way in. See, I'm touching right now. But when I push harder, it'll make a seal with the vinyl against the top around that hole. Let me put this back on the can. Now I'm going to place this can in the water. Now you're going to want to have a small little nail or a blunt object. You can get a nail and just cut the point off, have it ready. So in the event when you pull off the top of the can, if it is leaking a little bit, you could push the nail down gently to reseat the seal that's in the end of this can. Now you should not have a problem with a newer can. The one you see here is much older, so the O-ring in this can is not like a brand new one, which is very soft, so I do have to wiggle it just a little bit to get it to seat. Make sure the end of the plastic tube right here is cut flat, and then you want to make a little notch out of one edge of that flat ring that you just cut, because if you don't, the refrigerant won't be able to pass once you push down. So make sure the end is cut flat, with a little V cut in the side so once it's pushing down the refrigerant can make it through the tube and into the can. Let's give it a shot. Let me line it up. Get in position here. And you can hear it filling up. Just keep going. You want to lift straight up on the fill can, which is my right hand with the can on top. Once you get pretty full, you're going to pull straight up and away quickly. If any refrigerant's leaking out, that's when you're going to take that blunt nail and just gently push the valve in to make sure it seats. And like I said earlier, on a newer can, you shouldn't have an issue with that seating. Now, if you didn't have the cold water, what would happen, once the pressures in the two cans equalized, you wouldn't have any more butane going into the lower can. So that's why you want the ice water on the bottom to make the pressure lower in the can I'm filling, and you want the upper can to be higher pressure, which will be warmer. Going in nicely. You could pretty much hear at the end when it's finished, the flow will stop. Still going. You can hear it. I think the can is almost empty. And that's it. That's now full. Let's take a look. Nine point seven seven ounces. And that's pretty good because there's still a little bit left in this can. I didn't get it all out. Four ounces. Minus the weight of the can. And so I'm probably another ounce in this can that I didn't get out. But that's pretty good. At least this is 
pretty much full. That's what the end looks like right there. Now if you want to use propane, you can also use propane to fill this up. You could take a cylinder like this, one of the small propane fuel cylinders, and you can use that to fill the cylinder. And how I've done that before, I can show you with these pieces here because I don't have the actual fitting with me. You can take a quarter inch ball valve that has a female thread which accepts a quarter inch pipe thread going to an eighth inch hose barb. This side is also quarter inch female. In between you have a quarter inch by one inch long brass nipple going into a female end that's quarter inch and a reducing end that goes to eighth inch pipe thread. You take one of these refill adapters you can get at Harbor Freight. These are designed for taking your larger 100 pound cylinders, threading this onto here, and then filling the smaller ones. You take one of these, you drill this out, and you thread it with an eighth inch pipe tap. Once that's threaded, you could take a eighth inch nipple and screw these two together tight with Teflon tape. You then will have an assembly like you see in my hand. This would thread in right there. You would invert the can for the liquid. The other side of this would have the hose slid on. And at the very end of the hose, once the hose is made with the proper end, and then this is connected to the can, you're going to invert it. And then you're going to position this in the opening of the can, centered and push down hard. And while you're doing that, you're slowly going to crack this valve and the propane will flow into this can. Now you have to be very careful when you're using propane to fill this because this is 16 ounces right here. All right? And this only holds 10.6. So as you're filling, every so often you're going to want to stop, take a reading on the scale right here and make sure you do not exceed 10.6 ounces. If you enjoyed this video, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well. Thank you very much for watching.